Hey, short film moment. What's up? It's the Culture Detective here investigating your favorite albums and today I'm going to be doing a second review of the day. Uh, less than 30 seconds ago, I just finished doing the Death Dynamic Shroud album review and now I'm doing another review on the new Nana Ray album, Toy Box. So Nana Ray is a hardcore breaks musical artist and I have reviewed three of his albums already. Uh, last year I reviewed Zapper, which uh, kind of blew my mind a little bit because at that point in time I've never heard hardcore breaks music all that much but uh, Zapper sort of got me into it. It's so fun, it's so playful, it's so catchy, it's so harsh and aggressive at times and I just really like it. Um, and then that is followed with Nurse 2 released in the same year which is not as good in my opinion but still has a lot of redeeming qualities and after that point Nana Ray commented, Nana Ray himself commented on my Nurse 2 review and even followed me on Twitter. Yes, and from here on out, every time I review his music, I'll have to mention this. Um, earlier this year in January, he released Digi Maiden, which I think is a pretty good album as well. Tracks like A Million and One Mola um, is definitely a highlight for me. Even though it doesn't slap as hard as Zapper, I still think this is one of the better electronic efforts of the year. And then, of course, he comes up with another album, uh, Toy Box. And this time, um, and he has made several tweets about this already, he's trying to depart himself from anime aesthetics and start going for something else, which is kind of exciting. It's really exciting to hear an artist going for a different style, a different aesthetic. But that being said, though, unfortunately, I have to be honest here, I think Toy Box, out of all four of the projects I've heard from him, I think Toy Box might be the most underwhelming so far. And that's not because it doesn't have the anime aesthetics. Um, that's more so because I think a lot of the tracks here just sound like the same stuff that Nana Ray had been putting out in the last three albums, but even more average, I guess. The album opener N2 has the jumpy, rapid breakbeats and uh, all you need for a hardcore breaks track, but it's only two minutes long, it's a little brief. It doesn't serve as an intro track either, it doesn't build up to anything. There are some cutesy synth loops, but I wish he would use more of that because it just sort of disappeared. The track Mimi Clock is definitely a banger with the groovy, harsh electronic squeaks, the very blissful injections of noise, but after listening through the, throughout the whole track, it's a banger, don't get me wrong, but it just feels like a less exciting version of Salmon Cannon Deluxe. It just sounds like that to me. So it didn't really hit me as hard either. Yokai Weapon Systems is a dime a dozen breakcore track with some noisy grinding tones, some random Japanese vocal samples here and there. It's just a little basic as far as Nana Ray's music goes. But the first track that uh, sort of wow me is the track Castle of Needles. I think this is a really anxiety inducing, heart racing, pounding track with shrill synths and a tight ass beat. Really enjoyed this one. And Violet Matter also tries something similar but just doesn't hit as hard. Maybe it's because the instrumentals just run a little too thin. And then there's a track that's just really forgettable and then afterwards we have a Hyperion 777 AF mix with the weird rapid synths that sounds like it came straight out of an old video game. This is amazing. Okay, let's continue. I'm running out of time. So uh, yeah, the slamming, pumping beats, um, it's all there. Um, except I just think the track is a little too long. It's around seven minutes long and I just wish there's more dynamic in this track. I wish there's more change of progression. But I can definitely say that for the next track, Blue Whale, which is easily my favorite track on the album. It's easy, it, it's relaxing, it puts you in a trance and then the B sort of takes a backseat and you sort of float in this space and then it introduces one of the catchiest synth leads in the album, if not the catchiest. And then as the track progresses, it gets noisier and noisier and the noise at the end is really justified. Finally, the album ends off with UVB428, which is a pretty okay ending. 
uh, pretty much hardcore breaks 101. It sounds very harsh, it sounds very aggressive. But not much else, it just didn't have the um, oomph that I really love. It just doesn't have the excitement for some reason. And that's pretty much the album. So yeah, there are a lot of great moments here, don't get me wrong. But unfortunately, it's just, it just could have been better, is what I'm saying here. I'm going to be honest here. Um, but yeah, it's not that bad. I'm giving the new Nana Ray album, Toy Box, a light 6 out of 10. So have you listened to the new Nana Ray album? Like if you like it, hate if you hate it, and subscribe if you want more. And thanks for watching.